Good afternoon, friends. Welcome to our homestead. Today, I'm going to talk about these propane tank top heaters. I'm going to talk about all the issues that can go wrong with them, how to fix those issues, and also if I'd ever buy one of these again. Let's go. So I've had these tank top heaters for a few years and they haven't treated me very well. This one, which is the MH80, I believe it is, by Mr. Heater. This one, which is the MH540 by Mr. Heater. And also this Big Buddy by Mr. Heater, which is an indoor type unit. The Big Buddy is brand new for this year. The MH540 I've used for two seasons and the other one I used for about four seasons. Okay, I've brought you over here on the workbench to show you this unit. It has essentially the same parts as the other unit. So I can talk about this and we can get an idea of what's going on here. This switch right here is called a tip over switch or some people call it a dump switch and they go bad all the time. What happens inside of here is a steel ball sits on top of a very light switch and that switch will allow all of this to work including the thermocouple. It'll allow gas to flow through this safety shutoff valve here at the bottom. If that ball is stuck or if it is corroded in any way, it will not push down that really light switch inside of here and you may need to replace that. These go bad so often that you might just want to bypass it. Bypassing it is easy. What you're gonna do is disconnect both of these wires from that tip over switch. What you can do is get a small piece of wire and connect these terminal connectors to the ends of it. What we're gonna do is connect this jumper from one wire to the end of the other wire, basically bypassing your tip over switch. Now this is totally on you because it's not recommended to bypass the safety device, which is the tip over switch, but this is a workaround for a bad switch if you can't get one and you need your heater. All right, issue number two is that you have a bad thermocouple. So you're gonna to need to buy a new thermocouple and replace the old one on here. Now, before you go buying a new thermocouple, you can adjust the depth of this thermocouple so that it is closer or farther away from the heat source. You can see the thermocouple here. There's an adjustment screw right here and you can loosen this adjustment screw and slide this in or out. You're gonna to have to play with that and see where it works the best and if it stays on properly with your adjustment. Also, sometimes these thermocouples can get rusted through or corroded really bad and they will break off and then it is completely useless. So you will have to replace it. Now you can see the next problem right here. See this black staining and soot. Look at how terrible this is. It's just flaking off. This happens when your mixture of oxygen to propane is completely messed up. Sometimes that happens if you're in an enclosed space and you don't have enough oxygen to burn and mix with the propane. However, if you're in a greenhouse like me, that shouldn't happen at all because it's very porous around the corners, the bottom, all over the place. Which means there could be another problem with the orifice that is letting the gas out and mixing it through these holes with the oxygen to burn. So what we're gonna do is take off our tube here, like so. We're gonna check this orifice here. Now each model is gonna have a different number of these orifices. The one that is on the top of my other tank right now, the 540, has three of these. Now you can see that spiders like to make little nests in here, and this will get corroded from other stuff in the environment. You can see I've got spider webs right here. What you're gonna need is one of these little reaming kits or one of these miniature drill kits. It's, it's essentially just a very, very thin wire and it's got just a little bit of um, texture on the end of it. Measure the correct one so that you do not make this hole any bigger and then just give it a good run through to clean out anything that might be in there. Once you have that cleaned out, that should do it. But sometimes there is another issue that I have not been able to overcome and I'll show you on the other model. But before I do that, I want you to also pay attention in the air tubes, around the orifice and around the burner for anything that looks like scaling. And that scaling will look a little bit different than this soot up here. It won't be as rough and crusty. It'll be more smooth. 
but that is from burnt up grease, stuff in the air, uh, spiders, insects, um, spider webs, all of that. And you wanna clear out and clean out all of that. Okay, I'm over here with the 540 model, and honestly, I'm about ready to throw this one in the trash. Everything that I just showed you with the smaller model, I've tried to do on this large model. There is no soot on it, but I've reamed out the orifices, I've checked the tip switch, I bypassed the tip switch, and things become vapor locked all the time. It only runs for about an hour and a half and essentially it's brand new. The other thermocouple that you saw in the package is for this one, but I should not have to replace it after just one year of use last year and then trying to use it this year. I've had some other connectors on here. This is an external gauge assembly that I have so I can tell how much propane I have left in my tank. I took that off to see if that was the issue. It's not. The one thing that keeps failing is this tank top safety switch right here. This is what you push to let the gas out so you can light it from the bottom. About an hour and a half into burning, it will shut off and this will get vapor locked. Now, usually when you get vapor lock, it's usually in the tank itself or in the line, not up here in the safety switches. So one thing you can do to help with that is you can detach your line. I heard a little gas there. This is turned off on the tank. Try to push this switch out and light it. That'll let any gas in the line out. As you can see, nothing's happening. You can purge the top of your tank a little bit. Just open it a slight bit. Hear that hiss? So we've got gas coming out. I can smell it. We're gonna connect this all back together. Now you can hear gas. No problem, it'll light. You can't see that on camera right now, but it is lit. Now you're thinking maybe it's a leak in the gas hose. We have checked all the connections made sure they were sealed properly, and they are. After it vapor locks in the safety switch, there's really nothing you can do to get it lit again. It will not allow any more gas, or it won't allow itself to be relit. Now, the only thing I can do to let that pressure out of the safety switch here is to undo these two screws. And as soon as I do that, poof, out comes a big shot of air. There is a seal back here, and it seems to be fine. And as you can see, this looks brand new, which essentially it is. So I should have no problems with this at all. And to be honest, I cannot find another replacement for this, for this model. So up on the top here is where the thermocouple comes next to the flame. There is a screw right here that you can undo that lets go of this clip that allows you to replace it. However, this one doesn't seem to have any adjustment because of the lip on the thermocouple itself doesn't allow it to go up or down. So unlike the smaller models, like the one on the bench I showed you earlier, I can't really bend this thermocouple in to come in closer contact with where the gas is igniting. I can loosen it up like this and push these wires out. So that pushes the thermocouple closer in. So you can try all these things that I've just mentioned to be able to get yours up and running again. However, for this model here, it just doesn't work anymore. And that's led to dead bananas, dead orange trees, dead lemongrass, all of it. Here in Texas where I live, it got down to 17 degrees a week and a half ago, and I needed this, and it was not functioning for me. I don't need it for extended periods of time like you in the north. However, this was a perfect size for my greenhouse for the number of really cold days that we do get here. And it's failed me. So I'm gonna be showing you what we are going to be switching to in the very near future. But first, let me talk about that big buddy heater. So this is the Big Buddy heater. I use it for my doghouse. Both of my dogs are working dogs and they stay outside. It's an insulated doghouse, but there's certain nights where it's just really cold and I wanted, wanted to give them a little extra heat. So this is brand new. I've only used it on low on one side and this takes these one pound propane bottles. So I'm gonna take the front off here and talk about this a little bit more. There's an orifice down here at the bottom. This down here can get clogged up because of dust and dirt. Because of its angle, it's angled up, things fall into it, and it doesn't allow the gas to escape properly and ignite properly. So what you can do is clean it out with a Q-tip. However, this is brand new, and it will not stay lit. After it shut off the first time, I cleaned it out, and it was running for a few hours, but it keeps shutting off, just like 
the tank top heater. This was set on a flat and level surface and the tip or dump switch should work perfectly. So those are some fixes and strategies and information that you can use to hopefully fix your tank top heaters. But for me, I'm done with them. Mr. Heater, if you want to contact me and tell me what the problem with these things are, I'm happy to talk to you, but I cannot rely on them to heat my greenhouse and keep things from freezing in the winter. So I'm going to be switching to probably a pellet stove, either a gravity fed pellet stove or an electric pellet stove. Now for the electric pellet stove, I will have to run electricity out here to the greenhouse. I don't have it here, but it's something I've wanted to do for a few years. The gravity fed pellet stoves like this one right here can be great, but they are almost just as expensive as an electric based one. There's also an option to get a very small wood stove for in here, which could burn maybe longer than your pellet stove. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to get, but it's going to be wood based. Now, for those of you asking if there are other strategies to heat your greenhouse in the winter, there are, but none of them really work great. In the past, I had a smaller greenhouse and I used a strategy in there of painting big 55 gallon drums black, filling them full of water and allowing that to absorb the heat of the sun during the day and then radiate it at night. That's a fantastic strategy and can work on a very large scale to some degree. But if it's the winter and it's exceptionally cloudy all the time, that heat is not building up in those barrels. A lot of people also try to do hot composting in their greenhouse in the winter, and that's great too. However, you need nitrogen, you need greens to be able to do that. So if you don't have a manure source, or if it's in the winter, you don't really have any greenery around, everything is brown and dead, you're not gonna be generating the heat that you think with a compost pile in your greenhouse. Now there's a million other strategies like digging out and doing a heat sink in the floor. There is underground um, heating that we actually tried to do, air heating uh, that circulates in the winter time. We tried that initially with the greenhouse and it didn't work, but I know, I think it's LDS Prepper, or is it LDS Reliance? One of the two, they did that strategy up in Idaho and it seems to be working very well for them. Well, that's all friends. I hope that was helpful for you. Now go click on these videos right here, which is our series on how we built this greenhouse by ourselves. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.